Tim, we're talking about Boomer Benz. Boomer Benz became like a really big thing after that video that we did. And uh, when you guys were in town here, I totally forgot to ask you about it. And then we talked about it after your gig. So I'm actually yeah. calling you to, to talk about this. T tell me about, let's talk about Boomer Benz. <laughs> Well, first off, I, I guess, um, you know, you got to love the internet. Yep. Uh, secondly, you know, I think um, just, you know, the, the conversation was pretty candid between friends. Obviously, we were just, we were filming, but, you know, right. I think, what were we talking about? I think we were talking about generational, like, differences in guitar playing. Yeah. You're talking um, about your dad, though, I think. Yeah. 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 And because uh, that's how that's how I started, you know, like was learning like um, like Hendrix songs and Black Sabbath and all of that. And there's um, there's a lot of bending going on. You and know? Tim, you bend. I mean, this is not some. some I do uh, bend. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's why this is this was very funny. I mean, you you bend, you use your your whammy bar, everything. Yeah, and I think um, you know it's it's like a very distinct sound. And, and I was telling Eric and I was telling you that night that, that uh, you came out to our show, but like Eric messaged me and, and we were talking about it and, you know, it's just a way that I would describe it. You know, if I was in a session in the studio with somebody and, and they were like, you know, Oh, I want it to sound like really eighties and, and just all over the place. I'd be like, all right, let's throw some boomer bands in there. Let's get it. And then that's what I would play. It's just a way to categorize the sound. And obviously like boomer is now like a kind of an insult because of the <laughs> internet, but at the same time it is, that's what the generation is called, right? Baby boomer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, a, so, I'm I mean, literally it, a boomer. I, I am, I was born in 62. So, so I am a, yeah. a boomer. Like so did. there's people like you and my father, and then there's people like people on the internet that can choose to, uh, you know, get hurt by by that. But you know, that's. But we were talking can't, about it in. Can't in, win them in, all, you know. We were no, we were cracking up about it though, and we, you know, I talk we talk with Tosin, and we we talk about Boomer Benz and Eric as well, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and, that, and there's you know you know it's all lighthearted fun, and then there's it, you know it is what it is but like i don't know i i play bands i play a lot of bands you know i, was I, tons you, of bands. I think i think i think scott over here is the uh the the future of bands you know and in, in the way that he bends so you know bending is cool it's it is what it is you know and uh that's i don't know it's for me it's just a, a a simple way to classify it you know what i mean of like oh that's the sound we're going for i know what to play now there's obviously very tasteful ways to bend i think uh mateus asado like those does those like awesome. extremely tasteful and then there's like the really like you know intense bends like the dime bag bends which those are my favorite and then mm -hmm. you know they, they scott does a lot of those and and uh even brings it to a whole nother level and Wes Houck as well. So those are, uh, you know, those three players, Scott, Wes, and Mateus are my favorite benders. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's so many cool things to do with bending. And in that particular scenario, that you know, it's, that's, that's the best way I can describe that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought it was the perfect description of it. I was cracking up. I, I use the term uh, I use the term now all the time. I actually don't play a lot of boomer bends myself. I've noticed that with your playing is it's very um, not that. <laughs> yeah, I, and, but, and, and I, no, I don't think most most people don't notice that. But it's, that to me, that was, you know, things that everybody did. So that's why I, I didn't do it after a while. It's like, well, I don't I that's kind of how we learned back when I was a kid. And it's like, well, everybody's been doing that forever. So I kind of started playing without doing that all the time. I think it's a rite of passage. Without learning to do that, then how do you know to bend a note to the proper intonation? That's right. You know, and I think somebody pointed out in that video that I didn't do that. And, you know, I'm about, I'm a bit out of practice. So, you know, <laughs> what can I say? But, um, you know, like at, at one point, you know, like that's that's how I learned was, was playing like that. And, um, you know, it's it is something that you like everybody does, right? And, uh, and you learn playing classic yeah. rock solos, right? Yeah. 
of course yeah. I, you know that's that's the there's all the all the classic blues licks were like the first things that i ever learned how to do and uh that you know it was a great thing to learn because i feel like without having learned all that stuff when i was a teenager it was like okay I liked that, and then I went into like I really liked emo music, and then I went into straight death metal from emo music. So had I like that, and that's when I really started playing in bands. Was like when we were like playing the blast beats and the, and um, had I just jumped into that, I think I would have missed a crucial part of guitar playing. You know what I mean? And then uh, just been really uh, what's the word? Uh, Ill equipped. I don't know if that's a word, but it is. <laughs> um, yeah, ill-equipped in in guitar. So, you know, I'm very grateful to my dad and all the, you know, people who play like that because you know, without that, it, I wouldn't be the player that I am today. And I think that what what a lot of people um, kind of got tore up about was like, well, how can I express emotion without bends? And it's just like, well, no one said you couldn't bend. <laughs> you know like <laughs> um but yeah no like and and there's there's more subtle bends there's more there's the big wide ones you know and uh yeah there's so many ways to express emotion through bends and and um that was the way that everyone chose to do that back in the 70s and 80s and etc with the whiny whiny so <laughs> And that's just how they saw fit to do it. <laughs> All right. So this is just to, to clear up. And and when you were here, it just never even I it never occurred to me until after the show when we were talking about that. Otherwise, I would have asked you when you were sitting here. But uh, I was like, oh, I, I need to I need to call Tim and, and get him on the record about Boomer Benz. Yeah, uh, well, but that, you, do the the, of, uh... Uh, you, you do own the you do own the uh, the copyright on that. So I'm going to. Even though you actually said you said bend it like a boomer, but then yeah. Uh, well, I, how about this? We'll split it. We'll split it down <laughs> the middle, and, and uh, let's let's open up a store. We'll sell the we'll sell the the rights to you know Guitar World and whatever, and let's just make bank. I like um, it. But you know, w one of the things that I did say to you uh, that that night we were talking in the parking lot after the show was you know like. I fully expect, you know, to like one day, like people will be making the same jokes about my playing, whatever, like, um, you know, kind of slang insult generationally uh, for that. And I fully expect <laughs> that to happen. And I do welcome that with open arms um, because, you know, that's that's just the way the world works. You know, that's and, and works. we'll keep doing we'll just keep doing that from generation to generation. And that's the fun part about, you know, like having friends th th who've been playing guitar years before i was born you know like it's it's you get to hear all sides of it so you know cheers to that i guess yeah. okay so tim's gonna give me a walkthrough with his new plugin his neural dsp plugin tim tell me about this thing tim's playing my signature guitar signature rick beato gibson there you go i don't know the model number it's just uh it's a double cut double cut less ball all right so the first thing that we have here is the pink amp, um, and this is kind of based off of the JCM 800. Um, and there's a real one over there, mm -hmm. so this is the replica. Um, but yeah, it's really cool and pink, um, and it sounds like this. <laughs> You can really get it to distort if you throw the gain up, and then also the master. Just throw that all the way up. Okay. Um, and then it should sound something like this. And then, nice. if you wanted to, you know, have more, you could throw the overdrive on. Okay. And even a compressor. And. Wow. Take off some of the uh, reverb, and then you know, maybe throw the gate up a bit. Okay. And you can kind of have that like modern. That's a tight like, gate. Yeah, it is. That a sounds tight great. Gate. Yeah. So you can, you know, it's a pretty versatile amp because, like I said, once you go back to the default. <laughs> pretty clean all right beautiful so, reverb. thank you um this is 
I can't remember what I based this one off of, but um, we pr I pretty much don't uh, don't use that many like analog gear pieces. So like most of this is based off of my other favorite plugins. Mm -hmm. So it's a plugin full of plugins. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, so the next amp that we have here, let me go over here. This is the first one. Um, and this is basically just an ac acoustic simulator, and I'm going to go over to the factory where it's nylon, okay. and it sounds like this. And it's a pretty... clean sounding thing, and Beautiful. then, um, you know, I, I've got... Me and Scott have, uh, you know, these these nylon electric guitars that when you plug in, it's just this is the patch to use because it just sounds like a nylon guitar. Yeah. Um, so then, the there's you know that's pretty much the gist of this. If you want to like change the blend, you can get it to sound more. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what this amp does. The next one um, is wow. Yeah, we did a lot of really cool aesthetic things yeah, on these uh, on these pieces, but um, so this one is kind of based off of like a matchless. Okay. Um, and uh, it's got two channels here, channel one and channel two. I want to say that channel two is um, worst clean. So this is just yeah, it's channel two. So this is just like my default tone. Okay. Um, sounds like this. <laughs> a ton that's I, yeah. I use a lot of compression um, okay so just, wh where's the compression page on this so how do you get to the uh so over here you can see the compressors yep. on and i've got it compressing quite a lot and okay it's slow um and then so this right here the channel two really doesn't have anything to do with the amp okay um this is a direct clone of a different amp simulator that i just use regularly and it's it has it's just the closest thing to this when you flip this channel right here. You get a lot more dynamic. You know, this is the actual power of neural DSP in this and uh yeah, it's just Scott when he was trying these out, he was like, Yeah, no, I like channel one a lot better and I was like, No, I just I, and I told him I was like, just put channel two on there for me. It's really only for me. Um, and you know, for all the people that want us to have the the exact, you know, things that I've been using, that's the clone of it. But so yeah, those you know, this is kind of you can get a lot of really cool clean tones. Um, and then you know, we already went through this one. Um, this is like the lead tone and everything. So moving on, this is the coolest part wow. about the plugin. What this is, is that? This is the money maker right okay. here. Um, I would love to show. Is it like a harmonizer works. or something? It is a harmonizer. So we're gonna go over to Scott's presets. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it's you, there's so many wow. different things you can do with it. I've got one over here. Dark fantasy and E minor. It doesn't like chords because obviously you're chording chords. You know, you're chording you know, chords, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't really respond well to that. So these are kind of just the basic things that it can do. Um, it. It gives you so much control. Uh, some of these other patches are, are super wild. All right, so then, um, you know, the multi-voicer has so many things you can do with it. Um, obviously, we've got a bunch of EQ bands here. Um, so if you ever wanted to boost whatever frequencies you could or subtract, assuming you had something harsh. Um, and then we've got a very simple chorus. <laughs> Oh, 
also there. Um, throw the delay on. And then you've got a nice shimmer on the reverb. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and you can hear it tail wow. off like that. But yeah, that's the plugin in a nutshell. Um, you know, if you guys are interested in this, I'm going to do a more in-depth thing on my own channel eventually. Um, but, you know, thank you, Rick, for having us and allowing us, allowing me to showcase this plugin. Cool. Thanks, guys. Check out Tim on his YouTube channel. He has a great YouTube channel. And you can check out these guys on We also everywhere. have a YouTube channel. You all, have, you all, <laughs> have, all of you guys have YouTube channels. Yeah. You got all the things. All the things. You got all the things. And Instagram. Cool. We so. got to go play a show. So thank you guys. Yeah. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it. And check out my Beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>